Hey, hey, what up, what up? We are back. Are you with doing? Another, we're back with another episode of Silver Screen Breakdowns. I am Alex. Nelson Tynes here <laughs> in Hollywood. And it is I, Bo Gardel Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and I'm him tonight. The movie we are breaking down tonight is Something Good Coming. And Nelson, why don't you introduce our guest tonight? Oh, yes. We got, um, oh, ladies and before gentlemen. Jen Ball, the baller. What's up? You know, um, <laughs> the baller on the Instagram. Thank Love you so it. much got, for having me on. <laughs> thanks for coming, Jen. Coming on. Yeah. yeah. And last but not least, Ryan Miller. Uh, sorry, Ryan Willer, the uh, producer of Something Good Coming. The two stars here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hello. Yeah. And, and uh, Jen, you also were co-producer on this? Yeah, I was co-producer. The and then uh, Ryan um, wrote the script as well. Awesome. Yeah, we can't shortchange Jen, the star of the movie, producer of the movie. Yeah, Thanks. come on. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. It's actually, I, I consider it my first major um, producing position, at least with like a feature, was this awesome. film. Like, okay. I trained a little bit on another feature that um, Ryan had worked on before that, and it was kind of more like training ground, but this the one that I truly feel like was like the first that I really produced. And so it was, what a great film to start out with, I think. So I think. Oh, we're so I didn't know much about, I didn't know much about this movie coming in. And yeah. one thing that's pretty awesome is all the film festivals and all the awards that this movie has been a part of, that yeah. this film has been a part of. Let me go down this list. Everybody get ready. So the Culver city film festival. And that was uh, one of the selections. Got uh, best director and actor from uh, the um, New York Award, outstanding performance by Jen. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Diamond Award best actress in a romance for Jen. Awesome, and Platinum Award for best actress in a comedy. Yeah, th that one was like more geared for the the actors uh, cool. and directors. Some of them what? are kind of more specific, but yeah. And there's a big list of them. What would you say out of all of these ones, what would you say was the most fun one for you? Maybe just being in attendance or anything. Yeah. I, well, I would say we were in an attendance for, um, there's one on there called World Fest Houston, and we weren't in attendance for it, but it's probably the highest or higher level one that we got into. Easily, yeah. Nice. Yeah, because it's it's been around for what 50, 60 years, Ryan. And I believe Spielberg got his start doing that festival and he won a Remy for it. And um our film actually won a Remy at this festival too. So um that oh. that was really exciting for us. Spielberg, um, if you're watching yeah. this, I want my money. <laughs> <laughs> he owes me, he knows it. <laughs> Continue. Awesome. Um so that one was cool. I think, um, uh, what, I don't know. I'm trying to think. We went to so many of them and they all kind of had different things. Like um, I think the Italian film festival was fun because they had like a 360 camera and like some yeah, cool right. red carpet stuff. Um, we didn't go to this one, unfortunately, because we were filming our current um movie tales california but frank my co-star went to it the wine and women and film festival was oh, out in wine country and i guess they like wined and dined him and oh, he got like, huh? like some nice swag bag you know nice. so i was wow. telling ryan i was like we got to put tales california in that because i want to go to that yeah, like, yeah. You know? they thought he was going to lose his job like they're they're feeling for him they thought he was going <laughs> to lose his job had to take yeah. care of him <laughs> yeah no it's good it, i mean i'm glad he was able to represent since we were busy but uh um, yeah but yeah all, all of them kind of have their own special thing the burbank film festival was pretty cool because i got to sit in on some panels um I think Ryan was busy that day, but yeah, yeah, like a lot of them had panels and like little red carpet moments. Sherman Oaks had like a cool interview uh, yeah. Q and a thing we did. So they all kind of had, you know, some Golden State things. Film Festival was at Grauman's Chinese Theater. Oh, that yep. Was, yeah, yeah, that's where I went to the first screening. Oh, yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, the oh. one that Tarantino always references, right? That was like what, what, he famously would watch movies there or something like that. Oh no, he famously like won't yeah. show his movies there anymore, right? 
<laughs> yeah, like you went to war about the Star Wars thing. So imagine imagine it. like that. Yeah, because it's like right in the heart of Hollywood. So yeah. What... He likes to open up these vintage places like in Silver Lake, I think he I uh, Nelson, you live in Silver Lake. Have you seen that like vintage old timey uh movie theater? That's I don't know. The oh oh yeah, the um the well, that's where we did the, the the first review. I was on the road, remember, Alex? I want a real vintage. I want I want a soul. Yeah, a true romance. I'm cranking it. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, bought, he bought that, and so he's doing some stuff with that. So Tarantino, yeah, for the, listening, very cool, man. So. We Tarantino is the um, very oh, cranky. You don't have the right? project because we did a movie review of True Romance. Remember, Alex? I went to the yep. theater where he yep. comes out mm. the movie theater. Uh -huh. It's not theater that, 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 that Jen's talking about. No, the the Vista, the Vista Theater. The Vista. That's it. That's yeah, the up the street from my place. Yep. Yeah. Nice. nice. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that was uh, Tarantino was messing with that one. He is. Yeah. But I, I, mean, some of Tar I don't think Tarantino would like this film as much as he might like uh, Tales California because there's like blood and crazy yeah. stuff. In there. I saw a clip from that. Is that the my movie? blood? Yeah, yeah. I saw your clip. Yeah. You and Nelson meant business in that clip. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're going to we're going to get into uh, breaking down the movie and reviewing it here real yeah. soon. But I will tell you though, like I just like I'm sure Quentin Tarantino would probably think it's like when, when, when the characters first meet, all I kept thinking is, okay, is one of these persons gonna be a killer? <laughs> like it's like <laughs> such a weird way, <laughs> such a weird way of them meeting is one of the <laughs> me or Frank's character, right? And I was like, well, first she's just gonna be something bad coming. You're like, her car really broken? Is, is this an act? Is her car really broken right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there was a brief moment where I was thinking, okay, she's a special agent. You know what I mean? Some like some, <laughs> some secret operative, right? And then you know. Then the Uber guy, he just kind of broke it down in its simplest form, right? You know, it's a, it's a classic boy meets girl. Yeah. And, uh, one Ryan, thing I will say, no, if we do a sequel, Keely's going to become a special agent. That's the that's. The I, told, I told Nelly that same <laughs> thing. Nelly, vouch for me. Oh I my said, god! Yeah, he did. Boogie comes up. I with said, a lot if of they ideas. do a that's sequel, you may want to be right with that guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be him telling another story. You know. Yes. Saying? A yeah. very different maybe it could be a timepiece. You throw him back in the seventies because he was a taxi driver before. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're giving us yeah. a lot of good creative ideas. Thanks, guys. Oh, he will. <laughs> well, he will. It won't stop. He won't stop. Yeah. I'll send in. I'll send the invoice. You hear me, Spielberg? <laughs> Stole all my ideas, Spielberg. Did hey, Ryan? Tell these guys about the shooting. I'm still fascinated by how how you guys shot it, like the amount of time and stuff. Um, we were shot in seven days. Uh, nice. at the very end of 2021 um and yeah there was a lot to put together but you know we we did a lot of planning um and were there any restrictions because of the time that we were living in at the time you know what i mean like i mean well, it is kind of a brilliant way of getting around it if you can't have too many people because of the no times. Like, no but no but there is a story that i can kind of tell or some things okay. i can kind of tell mm -hmm. um because uh, this film was delayed because of COVID. Mm. Um, and in 2021, things weren't quite back to normal. It was starting to be normal-ish, but not fully. I don't think that really happened until 2022. But uh, I met Jen in 2019, towards the end of the 2019. End. The very end, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just she was an actor. Uh, someone was using a location of mine, and, and we met. And I was just kind of developing this. I had the script. And was gonna shoot it and offer and you her were like you are it, you are my you are my star. I, I mean, I wanted to talk to her and get to know her, um, but to kind of summarize it quickly, um, you know, I put some things in place for this to be shot in summer of 2020, and in March of 2020, we all know what happened. I mean, everything just yeah. flat, you know. Um, I, I, I call it the apocalypse. Flat line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I call now. You guys have watched the movie in summer of 2020. There would have been absolutely no way to shoot this. Like things were unlocked. Right. Absolutely not. Yeah, you need your. So we went. I went and did another film, which was. It would have been distance. Probably would have been six feet apart. 
You would have called it something six feet apart instead. Of six feet apart. <laughs> right? Uh, That's yeah. good. I don't know how you would have done the love scene in the hotel room, <laughs> but we could have figured out a way. <laughs> but, they, were just, uh, they were just sexting each other in, in <laughs> from six exactly. feet away. Yeah. Exactly. I went and did another film that Jen helped out on, which is what she was referencing uh, for, uh, you know, a year until things started to open back up and it was possible to to do the movie again. Um, and and no, by, by the time we got around to doing it, all the locations that we shot in were, were open and um, it was just a lot to coordinate, really. Um, which yeah. is why I didn't, I didn't direct it. I didn't act in it, which at certain times over this year and a half delay, you know, I was going to direct it. There was a point where I was going to act in it with Jen, but there's no, I'm just going to produce it. Cause it was, it was tough to do that. Um, they'd be shooting and I'd be on the phone for the next day's shoot with the locations and everything. Um, so as far as the process of like making it, Jen could probably elaborate more because I was kind of on the sidelines just over every seeing, overseeing everything. She was in the thick of it, acting and being in. Yeah, I really I mean, appreciate the dude dude in there, and 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 your character as well, Jen. Like they, uh, you see the transition of the demeanors and like when they first, you know what I mean. Like it's, I thought yeah. it was, and and you and, and it is kind of Tarantino esque because it's like dialogue driven as fuck, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You really get consumed into like, you know what I mean? And then it kind of brings me back to those times too when you first meet someone and like, you know, what I mean, you're you're kind of an open book because you're comfortable around this person. Because uh, ironically, you end up being more comfortable around someone that doesn't even know you at all. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, so you don't you feel like they're not judging with, you on all this stuff exactly. that you know they might have previous, like your closest friends might know or something. You know. Yeah, Probably a refreshing, a refreshing thing. But yeah, I mean, as far as being involved uh, on an acting level, I've never done a film that's been that strenuous, I guess you could say, because it was seven days in a row and the shoes were easily 12 hour days. But then you have to factor in, you know, I'm coming up from L.A. That we did the majority of it in Simi Valley because uh, Ryan lives up there. And that's where he was able to secure a lot of these locations. So, you know, you're looking at a 45 minute commute each way. I mean, they were long L.A. Days. times. That's like an hour and some change. Yeah, exactly. So you're looking at very long days. And as you mentioned before, um, Bogey, that the, uh, the script is very dialogue heavy. So um, at one time, I think Ryan even referred to it as almost being like a something you'd see on stage because you've got to memorize a hundred pages. Yeah. Like, we don't have well, the live play. really uh Nelson, you can talk to this a little bit. I mean the film we're doing now, the days were kind of spread out, but imagine Nelson doing what you did on a few of the days, but seven days in a row. I mean that that's what it was. Yeah. 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 yeah I did those like two monologues were like three minutes long like no one's talking right. To me. right 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 so you kind of yeah. can attest to this a little bit because tales california was done in a similar way it was just i think it was nine days spread out over five months we were just kind right. of yeah. i think as we went this one was all kind of crunched together did you do that because of covid and you just wanted to get it done the filming part as quickly as possible no i, I prefer to do it that way um it, the, the film we're doing now though, or that we just wrapped was a little bit more, I don't want to say it was unplanned. Like we, we had a plan, but, uh, it's a bigger, I, I don't know, bigger we, undertaking a, a little bit of a bigger undertaking and just, it was more I, action, just, you know, it's that's more that's action better. heavy. Yeah. Really something good coming. Like you say, it's all just dialogue. It's them talking mm -hmm. minus, you know, like they go ice skating and a couple of scenes of physical activity. Um, I, I, I like the dialogue shit. You know yeah, I, mean? I need to know that I need to know the layers of the character, like you know, because I mean? I'm like a nitpicker, so like you know what I mean. I'm sitting there watching, and I'm like, you know, but when you you know, when you get lost in the dialogue, then that's when you realize, oh shit, this is some good writing because I'm not nitpicking for the last there, yeah, the um, funny. I, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go here in a little bit. Um, but I'll tell you something funny. I, I was uh, we we screened it at all these festivals, and a friend of mine came and and watched it, and he said that his favorite moment in the whole movie. And I don't know if you caught this. There, there's a little moment that was, I don't know if it was ad-libbed or if it was in the script. And you probably ad-libbed this. It's right when they get to the bowling alley. It's early in the movie. And she puts on her bowling shoes. And she kind of, Jen kind of does this little dance where yeah. it was like, <laughs> oh, easy now. And she's kind of doing this. 
Oh, she, she like, get a little shimmy on. She's like, oh, that's 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 through in there. <laughs> the friend of mine loved that. He's all right, and that was the best part of the movie. And I looked at, I said, really? All oh, that dialogue because it seemed natural, seemed real. All the dialogue that I wrote and put into this <laughs> months of laboring over and constructing, and you laugh at this fucking dance that Jen does. <laughs> well, I will tell you though, the part, the part of the. The part of the dialogue that I really respected was all the grocery store talk because you can't have two people who work in a grocery store not talking about I produce about work. I worked in a grocery store before. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know all the codes? <laughs> and, and, see, and that's what's funny is like that's what made me make my girl watch with me because when I met her, she's working at Trader Joe's. And that's one thing she said. She was like, grocery people are always like that. You know what I mean? Like you're just not, not talking about work. Not peacock. You know what up, Peacock? Mm -hmm. like, ah! Oh, you know what? And by the way, uh, you guys, I was just mentioning that in my notes. I go, I like the produce code naming by uh, by numbers. Potato. Four zero, four zero one. Those four are zero, real. Four zero one. Bananas. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, 4011, I know it's the banana code. I can't remember all of them, but that's one that'll be ingrained in my brain forever. I mean, yeah, people right. love bananas. <laughs> Give me, what's the artichoke? Give me the artichoke code. Yeah, yeah, no idea. Of, you guys noticed how hot dogs were really prevalent throughout the uh, film. Yeah, hot yeah, dogs, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were prevalent. Big I was gonna, I was gonna bring it up. And Why? I, thought, yeah. you know, I thought they were gonna Is have that a I, Alex thing, Jen. I'm, I don't know. It could have been double. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, a little double on time. <laughs> yeah, I wish the writer was here. Hey. 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 A little sexual in your windows there. Yeah. You know what I mean, we're just, we're just talking hot dogs, though. You know? Yeah, yeah, wasn't him, but. Dogs. Keely the was looking like she was having fun at that point. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, she, I'm yelling at, I'm watching it on my phone, and I'm yelling at, like, she's throwing it at you, bro. Pick up the signs. <laughs> what, like, is she she on a what, real is, cool, what is she trying to tell you here with all the hot yeah. dogs? Right. But the hot dog lines were in the really? script, but yeah. when they when they eat a hot dog at the beach, that was ad libbed in Jen's home about that because we had to oh, right. Them. Good. Okay, because well, that's because their thing now. Like that, so, that's their little thing now. It's eating hot dogs, right? Well, this is such an interesting thing. So, so when we do these productions, it's a lot of times like a skeleton crew. So you know, you don't have as many people watching everything as you probably would a big production. So you kind of mm -hmm. got to be in charge of your own wardrobe and props and making sure you're getting everything right. Mm -hmm. But we only had a limited amount of time to shoot that bar scene. The one uh, right before they go into the parking lot at nighttime and have this big fight. Um, mm -hmm. And we realized towards the end of filming there that Frank had the wrong, um, he had the wrong outfit on. He was wearing day, day one clothes oh, and he dude. should have been in the day two oh, shirt. Come, come on. Continuity. And we were like, oh <laughs> my God, what are we going to do? And to the credit of our director, Eddie, Eddie Beehill, um, he said, well, we haven't shot the pier beach scene yet. And that comes right before this. We're going to have to find a reason why he would change his shirt. So that's why we decided she was going to spill some kind of food. Oh, that's yeah, smart. And, and spill the shirt. So it ended up being a hot dog. And you can see the mustard stain just smeared across. It's like, okay, well, he's at a hotel. He's probably going to put his other shirt on and not want to mm -hmm. go to you know, the next place with a big stain on there. So that's kind of how we covered up for that. In case and that's why he, he went on the whole spiel about all his clothes, right? Like, uh, I have all my clothes. Yeah. And all my <laughs> and that's a little bit OCD because he's like, he's that character. Okay. He's not going to want to be in a stained shirt, you know. Right. So, we yeah. always have some actor on set wearing the wrong wardrobe. <coughs> Nelson. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't in charge of continuity. I didn't know. <laughs> we Tales, California, in a year or so, we'll talk about that. No, we, yeah. we want to see the blue. We want to see the alternate scenes with Nelson and the wrong. That, the, the that wasn't. Wardrobe. It totally wasn't just he Nelson. pulled out the wrong gun or what? He's like. <laughs> Pulls out a Mac 10 on the other one. He's like, listen, bro, you had a handgun the last time. <laughs> you know, I, I'm so I'm so all stiffened up from that stunt I did a week ago. Well, you I'm had to like... do it because you messed up. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Nelson's there, performing. Nelson, Nelson does his own stunts. I know performing his own stunts. Nelson, it looked good. It looked Nelson really don't good. Don't mess around. Yeah, Nelson. Nelson doesn't mess around. He went for it. There we he go. He did. I, we watched well, the Bruce Finger, the next yeah. but I'll get better. I'll get better. It's still worth it, though. It's worth it. You see, man, I didn't see much of the dailies or nothing, but what I did see, it looks good. You know, if I ever bled, 
if I ever bled on the set, then, you know, when I accept my award one day and I'm, I'm not lying, when I, I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you, and, and, and not, people don't really thank themselves either, huh? They always go like God or like, you know, the directors and stuff. Somebody you know, thanks what themselves. People like thanking the themselves? Like, so I just want to thank me for this one. No, somebody <laughs> at the Emmys this year did thank themselves. For this real? I saw that. Nice. I saw that. The yeah, she, was, the for the best, she got the best speech of the night because I, I forgot who it was, but she said, um, Oh, I think I might have seen it. That that's new. I thought that was old. There's a black actress, right? Yes, and yeah. she said, I want to thank myself for yeah. sure. She yeah. was like, I want to thank myself. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, she gave the performance. I mean, why why not? You know, <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nobody ever gives themselves a pat on the back for hey, like you know what, I did a damn good job. So, so Nelly, uh, remember that when when Beth, well, you know, hey, I think myself that for, for being prepared, but I thank these two for the opportunity in Tales, California. There you go. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm actually gonna, sign, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off here, guys. Oh, but bye, Ryan. Have fun, have fun with the rest of this, and uh, ask Jen anything. She knows all the answers. Yeah. Hey, great you, Ryan. Great movie, Ryan. Ryan. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me for a bit. See you guys. Bye. All right, see you guys. On. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he seems like a no nonsense director. Right, right, right. He seems yeah. like <laughs> Nelly again. Like, come on, your shirt is green. <laughs> I got a question for Jen before we hop in here because you said this was like the first movie where you were doing like some producing as yeah. well. What What do you think was the big difference for you, just being an actress versus acting and producing? Well, um, I think. I had, you know, because I had a say in some of the locations. So that was in pre-production interesting to be like, you know, I think we should see if we can get this place or that place. Um, I was, uh, I got to talk to the owners of the Holiday Inn. And that was interesting because I'm like, I feel like I'm taking these business calls where I'm like, hey, like, can we, can we <laughs> film here? You know, it's like interesting. And I'm, you know, not just acting anymore. Yeah, you're now putting in the groundwork. Like you're, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was. Scenes able to do some you know work with ryan to do some rewrites on the script which cool. you know i really enjoyed that because i got to put my own like some dialogue in there and um he um let me ad lib well actually it, it'd be funny if he was still on he didn't know this but i added a scene to the film when he was do you know the scene where pretty much keely breaks down and she's crying when she's with the uber driver yeah yeah mm -hmm. um that wasn't in the script at all it was oh, basically right. the the thing in the script was Keely visibly shaken, gets in the car and just asks the Uber driver to take her back. But all this other extra dialogue about like, you know, these mistakes I've you know made and things like that. That was all just between me and Dejan improving. Cool. Um, and I felt like it was really great because it kind of tied everything together and it kind of really showed like the guilt um, that this character had and for sure. Uh, and yeah, um, yeah and Dejan's great. He's I've worked with him. I've worked with him for years. We trained together. So just being able to work with somebody that I know and trust and we can just bounce yeah. off each other naturally. You have a vulnerable scene like yeah. Because okay, so here's my question. Sure. Where, where do you draw do you, are you drawing from somewhere? Like like when I make music, I'm usually like drawing from like you know things I've that I've experienced in my life. Like when yeah. you're going to that that space, right? That where you know what I mean. That emotional, mm -hmm. uh, the vulnerable spot. Like, are you drawing from somewhere in life? Are you, you know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, how yeah. of course, yeah. There's always there's always um, <clears throat> things I like think about, you know. And um, you know, for me, I for this particular moment in time, you guys are gonna laugh, but <laughs> I watched before I got in the car the. Um, first um two minutes of the disney movie up okay. oh yeah that's so <laughs> what movie is that i don't know it's it. so okay listen it's this so, one, so this upsetting one was nostalgic me. with me and my daughter because my oldest is 16 uh -huh. and that was the yes. first movie when she was like two years old movie mm -hmm. up movie up she always want to watch it and that first because it's 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 a it's a a quick montage of this couple Yes, go, their whole life. Yeah, and they go it's the monsters their whole life, and they lost a child and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and then she passes, and now he's just just this, this disgruntled old man. And there's like a fucking mall company that wants to like buy up the whole block and build a mall there, and he's just yes. holding his standing his ground, you know what I mean? Because 
this is him and Ellie's house. You know what I mean? Yes. And, uh, it's yeah. That that's so sad. That's it. I'm almost crying right yes. now. <laughs> I, I always I always cry when I watch it. It doesn't matter what. Um, the old wow, man. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, the the old man, and it reminds me of my grandpa, and he's like one of the most important people in my life. But it feels very similar because my grandma passed a few years back, and so, mm. you know, I, I think about that, and then I also think about like, oh my gosh, what it would it be like? You have all these plans in your life, and I start to think like, what if I don't get certain mm. things done, and I get to be that age and all the regret, you know? And then I then mm. it like opened up this whole gateway of like, oh my gosh, what things have I like regretted? And then it's like, you know, then it kind of ties in with the character and like the state. Start- yeah. And then you just go the there. You know? the characters, but yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Cause that was a, that was an intense scene. Yeah. yeah. So, I well, mean, that's, it's different with every role, but that was what I found helpful. Um, especially for that moment. Yeah. Like it. Well, Nelson, why don't you set well, the stage for the movie here and uh, we'll dip our toe in. Okay. So, well, it starts off. Okay, the name of it. Okay, sorry. The name of it is something good coming, and it starts off with two employees of the same company. All right, they're wearing the same clothes. They're like on a training, like a training retreat. The same clothes right? Okay, they're in the same company. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw them. So they're it's out in the It's kind of serendipitous, right? What's that? It's kind of serendipitous because it's like you know situational, right. like you know yeah. they meet each other because of this circumstance type of shit yeah and they're meeting in a parking yeah. lot and then i love that um, movie by the way serendipity yeah i'm telling you i've seen them all <laughs> i've seen them all with your lady you know, right? i'm jumping right on that elevator yeah. you go on that elevator i'm going on this one and yeah. push the button and we'll be on the same floor and it's meant to be <laughs> and they end up on the same floor i, I never saw the film you need to. It's so you good. You gotta watch it. It's a good one. John Cusack. Right. I actually, I actually vouch for it. Oh, John, oh, that one. Yeah, with Cusack. Okay, I know it. Yeah. I know that one. Come on, that's up there with Notebook, bro. Come on. <laughs> I'll tell you, right? You guys know their romance. I'm like very impressed. I'm telling you. Well, he's a romantic bogey. I'm, yeah. I'm a hopeless romantic. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got four kids. By the way, my own romance. I'm, I'm living my own romance now. You know what I mean? <laughs> that that hip hop stuff, um, Jen. I loved that. Who was that? That's him. Right there. You're looking at him. I need to that's know. Oh, oh, I was going to say, yeah, the music it was going, oh, that's me. I was, yeah. just, <laughs> I was trying to Shazam it, actually, and it wasn't popping up, and I'm like, I need to ask these guys. Well, you, you, know, like, you know what it is, too? Is those are, the, the, the main theme song for our show, that's actually available. So, um, on iTunes? Yeah, on everything. Okay. Spotify, all of it. That one's, uh, yeah. that, one's, that one's my man. His name is Triangulum. And it's featuring okay. me, Bogart, <laughs> Scott Free, and the song is called "Peace God," oh, right? Uh, that's our that's our yeah, theme Jenna, song. It, I'm looking. Jenna, if you ever need uh, s- some uh, some hip hop music for a film, uh, I would right love there. to. I would that's love right to. There. And and all the see, so there's a reason why we use the certain ones uh, yeah. for the countdown, so we don't get because even my own music will get flagged for it. You know what I mean? Because it's publishing. Gotcha. So like those are unreleased joints, which is cool because it kind of makes it exclusive to the countdown. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I know this is me. I, I gotta I gotta like find it here. Yeah, peace got um I can send I'll send a link to uh, okay, yes, yeah, I'll, send, I'll send the link to Nelly and he could forward you a bunch of I'll, I'll send you a bunch of stuff. I got some RB stuff. Too. I'm gonna download it because I was I was like really feeling that it was good. Yeah, yeah. look at that. Look at that, Spielberg. <laughs> See? <laughs> Pay me my money. <laughs> now I will tell you though, in the beginning, I never mm-hmm. Coming into this movie, I didn't know what to expect. I told Nelson we're we're gonna watch it, but I have zero expectations. <laughs> I didn't do any research or anything, so I just always think of crazy stuff like, okay, so this guy's like real pissed off about his job, and then he's oh, losing his job. Lo- yeah, it seems like he's you gonna know, lose his room. job. Super, mm-hmm. super like frustrated about what's going on, <laughs> and <Right>. then <laughs> Keely's there with uh, her with her broken down car, and that's the first thing. Like, oh man, yeah. Who's going to be the killer here? Like one of these people <laughs> is going to like, who is going to be the person who throws the curveball? Yes. And that, that was all I was thinking. And then as time goes, like just a scene or two goes on, like Keely is like, she's way too perky. And I know he says Love that me. word. I was like, this is almost like fake perkiness. Right, so you right. did a really good job of doing that because yeah. I, I, in the beginning, I couldn't tell. Is this the way that no, like, like like what's or his like, name really annoyed me too. I'm like, yo, he's so he's so bland. <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, like, but he's like, but you find out because he's yeah. a standoffish. You know what I mean? Like you find out, like, oh, right. why? 
She even right. calls him a stick in the mud. You're sticking the mud. Yeah. You well. right. <laughs> so, Seriously, yeah. When he goes, he, he didn't argue it. <laughs> nope. Oh, it's true. Have you guys ever see, uh, seen Barefoot in the Park? No, I've not. Okay, it's a really wonderful play by Neil Simon, but it is know. almost. I'm aware of Neil Simon though. Yeah, it's, oh, it feels like the these characters are a bit of a throwback to that. And what's interesting is Frank's another actor that I trained with, and we played the characters. Okay. in that but this yeah, takes place in the 50s but she's like kind of like wild and free-spirited like a hippie and he's just like this gruff businessman and she's like you're a stuffed shirt and so me of that same dynamic um yeah. when we did this, he so. goes from the stuffed oh, shirt guy he was stick in the mud he fits yeah. Every, yeah, to the stick in the mud he's like yeah. it's, it's the same line opposite ends yeah not exactly. not a stick of butter in the mud a stick in the mud <laughs> <laughs> the part yeah. that i thought like was butter I like the part that I thought was funny when they go back up to the hotel room and um, she was like, oh, yeah, I think I have to be at work at like nine or ten. Or I don't even know what time. <laughs> and um, and then she was like, oh, yeah, so I guess we don't have to go to work because like some idiot like left the <laughs> left the compost <laughs> bin out. He immediately got insecure. Huh? <laughs> he got, man, it was so funny to see the look on his face. He's like, oh, fuck, like I have to say that this was me. <laughs> was like, I it was it spreading out the company. <laughs> yeah, right. it's, it's like clearly she doesn't really care that much about where she works i mean she just probably one of those people that just goes to work yeah, to and business. he's like so serious and he's mm -hmm. like it's he's like yeah he's like you know i was about to be the man in produce bro <laughs> i know i i, I feel like I, stores i would have been responsible for <laughs> i feel like i've met people like him working at i mean i'm i was like 20 like 19 working at grocery stores and then you see the 35 40 year olds who are taking it real seriously like yeah. don't mess up anything yeah. in the produce section or the produce manager that you might peel you you might peel you. right they're Ooh, just like i see cool. what you did there produce <laughs> banana peel all that that's, that's mm -hmm. 10 points <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if Brian mentioned it, but he actually works for Kroger, so okay. that's where he got a lot of his inspiration. Um, he's oh, a, right. I think he's a produce man. He is a produce manager, so he knows all the codes. Of course he is. Oh, I, I was going to ask that too. Like, is there any? <laughs> is there oh, any oh, the to code. real life? Like, you know, like 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 that influenced the script. But yeah, so there's there's that right. He yeah. actually worked at a joint. Yep, he still does, and I don't think he takes his job as seriously as uh, Brett does in the script. But he could be making for Brett could be based on someone that he works with too. For all we know, right? <laughs> you know what? That is true. We should have asked him that, but I uh, okay. you, it is somebody he knows. I have a question about the cockroaches in here because mm -hmm. Keely was very like as soon as like. She starts talking about the compost. She was like, oh, I wonder what kind of like bugs it was. Yeah. And then like when you guys go to breakfast or whatever, she was like, don't you ever think about that? Like, why why are cockroaches like the most popular like bug in all these movies and stuff? That's so Tarantino-esque uh, <laughs> to have like dialogue about movies in a movie. I don't know. I don't know. That's something Ryan wrote. But what's interesting about that is um, I have a very um, real fear of roaches. And um, it's actually... I, there's nothing that'll make my stomach drop quicker and put me in a cold sweat and make me jump pretty much crawl up a wall like a roach that appears in a room. So <laughs> was it hard getting excited? <laughs> what? Was it hard getting excited about delivering that line? She was so excited to talk about the like, cockroaches. I just thought, what a interesting, weird girl, but okay, you know? <laughs> She's like I fascinated by these disgusting insects. <laughs> I see a roach. I'm going to hunt that motherfucker down and crush the shit out of him. Because they say, if you see one, there might be hundreds. So I'm, it's to tell your well, friends about me. You know? I need you around when that happens because I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I, I, I freak out. It's it's really not good. Cockroach is a different story. You got to hunt them up or down because they'll try to, they're, they're invasive. You know what I mean? Fuck oh. that. I'm killing, I'm killing them. I, and now you know what's weird about it? I can I can kill a scorpion and here these these are insects that can actually harm you but roaches I can't go near them they're just too Ooh. disgusting and fast and it's just a lot so and they can get right under that door too they're, they're like how did they do that they survived the prehistoric age so I don't put put anything past them I mean those. if they nuke this motherfucker to hell those are the motherfuckers running around when we're all gone <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're gonna be exactly. pretty popular. I mean, that's why they put them in the movies. I mean, I guess there's a roach guild, right? 
They're like uh, at this point, <laughs> I, would be, I would not be surprised. There's somebody <laughs> protecting the roach, especially. <laughs> I can well, see it. I don't think we're roach shaming right now, so I I don't, continue, yeah, continue. hopefully we don't get yeah canceled for roach shaming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so what, what what's the scene after you guys goes to breakfast? That's the the bowling alley scene, right, Nelson? Yeah, yeah, that's the bowling get, alley. Oh scene. yeah, they finally oh. they call the dude back now. Right? Yeah, they yeah. They call Adam. We, so if we, we start from the beginning, so, so uh, Brett's losing his job. Uh, he's mm -hmm. in the hotel room on the phone. Then he walks out. Then he meets Keely in the parking lot. She's all bubbly, and he's all bummed because he just lost his job because he's he suspended, which usually is a precursor to fire. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is gonna get and then they, they talk yeah. and then she's like all over him, which is like, I wish I, I wish I was in that position. I know. Like, right. Like, he's he's a, a, was right. Like, he's a porn wow. star. like, Oh, you need a jump. Like, I was like, yo, here we go. Right. Ryan's writing some good stuff because I put a man in that position. He'd love to be in that position. She's just like, yeah, so let, let's do this. Let's do that. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. this, this was almost, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a couple scenes shy of a porno now that Bogey just pointed that out. Like, it really is. Because, like, that doesn't happen. You don't walk in a girl's like, oh, hey. Do you have a jumper cable? Like, do you think, can we go up to your hotel room? Like, I mean, this <laughs> never happens in real life. That's my movie. You know what, though, too? Yeah. When, she, when he actually was, was candid with her, you know, and told her about all the, you know, about yeah, I was that guy and this and that. And, you know, she kind of felt a little guilty for talking shit. Right? She's like, well, yeah. you're not an idiot. And, like, and then, like, you know, he's already talking like, well, I got to get to the train. And she's like, you know what? She felt like, I felt like she felt the need to, like, liberate him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, let me, let, let's just go out. And, then, and and for her, too, who's trying to live, right? And I'm pretty sure her character, yeah. all her friends, you'll find out later why, but all her friends probably been telling you, you need to get out there. And so this is kind of her being, um, I mean, it's almost like a, a un uncharted territory for her as well. You know what I mean? I took it as like, you know, she's gone, you know, probably healing from, you know, you find out later this past stuff she's gone through. And so it's yeah. almost like an opportunity for her to like help somebody. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think she's feeling like, well, maybe, maybe I can make this guy's day better. Or, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes do you guys ever feel like by helping somebody, it also helps you because it just feels good. To, yeah, the un nice yeah, but we call that the universe. You know? Yeah, it's like you know, it's, it's uh, what goes around comes around, right? Right. She right. didn't always have the right things to say because uh, even when he she talks about leaving her her job, um, I don't really remember exactly like how that came up, and we find out later why she left the job yeah. and she was like, Oh, well, the bread. you see the look on her face. And she was like, it's cause I left some bread out and like, it got old and like, so something of that nature. I can't remember exactly the line. Right. She, well, she, I think she mentions that she's working part-time now and, um, she kind of stepped down from like what she used to do and he doesn't really understand why. And she kind of deflects with the joke, you know? Yeah. I, I thought that that was like, Beginning, you know, deflect with the joke, seem like everything's fine and dandy, and you know, it really isn't. I think yeah. like so many times in life, people want to put on a smile um when there's like a lot more going on under the surface, you know, they just don't want people to know. Yeah. And working at a grocery store, I will tell you that <laughs> probably 90% of the checkers up there were putting on some kind of fake smile. Except for one lady. There was one lady who'd like someone come up and say, hi, how you doing? And she'd go into like a 10 minute story about how, how am I doing? Well, those things suck. <laughs> <laughs> you see the look on the people's faces. They're like, I just want to pay and leave. You know what I noticed? Because you referenced her before. It's like, yo, she would just like unload on people. Yeah. Was she like a, like a lonely lady? Maybe she just doesn't get it. Well, she, she was, she was a little was she bitter. A cat lady? She was yeah. like, she, she was like, um, like what's his name? Uh, uh, Frank. Like Brett. She was just like uh, Brett. Like where okay. maybe he's a little bit bitter with his mm. job, you know, to a certain extent. And then yeah, she was right. one of the people who was there before the strike, so she was probably making good enough money to where she couldn't quit, but not good enough money to where she was happy. Yeah, that's probably yeah. Yeah. And they moving her <laughs> Not yeah. on solid ground. There's one line that, that you said that that was kind of funny when you're talking to Brett. There, you, you go. Um, he said he says that he takes the train. He's like, who takes the train? <laughs> <laughs> like, that made me think, well, I take the subway. <laughs> who takes the train nowadays? Well, I do. <laughs> but that moment there is kind of funny. 
I think that's another thing is she kind of sometimes um, talks without or speaks without thinking about things. Mm, yeah, she thinks like, out loud. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like whatever she's thinking right then, she's just going to say it. And it's like, I take the train. And she's like, oh, yep, yeah, that's real nice. You're an interesting <laughs> person. Okay. I, I ain't going to lie, too, because here's one thing that I thought that was really fly. Like, this dude, he is like, he got it, man. Cause he got her paying for everything, and like mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, she just wanted him to have a good time, and like you know, he's trying, he's trying to be like, sh sh uh, what's what, sh sh chivalrous? Is that the word? Yeah, yeah, like you know, he's like, no, like, he's like, no, I got it. You know what I mean? And like you know, I, I was just laughing, like I wonder if that like makes him feel a little emasculated, right? <laughs> you're just, dude, you know what I mean? Well, Bogey doesn't yeah. stop. Remember, oh, I don't want to spoil it, but you know, getting to the end. Uh, the reason why that the money's not an issue. The yeah, yeah, like, for sure. What? I think mean, you find out later. Like, find out later I'm like, oh, he hit the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> She's beautiful and think, got money. You know what I mean? I do think Frank did fantasy. a good job of, you know, maybe bringing some of that in for Brett in the sense of like, I mean, he's got to feel really low this job he takes so seriously he's about yeah. to lose and now suddenly this woman shows up and she's paying for everything i think it like he did a good job of showing like uh, you know yeah like a little disdain for it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. super yeah. vulnerable mm -hmm. um, he yeah, wasn't looking for tell. a sugar mama, but he got one just quickly. I mean, yeah. look, at, look, at, look at Brett, man. <laughs> he was so used to people like cindy that he didn't even know what hit him so yeah, and you know it's funny. You knew she was a bitch. You know what I mean? Just the way he said it. Her name was Cindy. Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you even you. Sugar Baby's got to work for a little bit, man. But he did nothing. He just, he's just being there. He's just hanging out. Yeah. Right place at the right time. Like that was like. I feel like he was like, "This is the person I'm going to choose today. <laughs> do this experiment. Yeah. And see what happens." I was going to ask you that. How many times do you think that she's done this? I know she's in a different area. Because yeah. they got, you know, because of the new store opening and whatever else is going on with COVID or during mm -hmm. this movie. Do you think, it, like, in where, the way you were portraying it, was this her doing it for the first time, you thought? Or would, could this have happened for the third time? I think, Ooh, you know, I, I, I always envisioned that part of her healing process was this, like, let's put on a happy face. But I think I'm trying to remember if it was three or four years since the tragedy happened. Well, it's like six. No, I think it was four. I think oh, it was they, were, four. they were together four. for six. Yeah. So four years. Yeah. So four years has passed. And I think. Um, we're married for six. Maybe he was, that's so fresh. Yeah. yeah and he <laughs> says, yeah. Yeah. And, and I wonder fresh. if like, I wonder if like she just made, like maybe she, she might've made herself physically available, but this might've been the first, one of the first time she made herself like emotionally available. You know yeah. I, mean? I feel like. In my mind, she's been doing this act for a couple of years, but I think this was the first time maybe with the length, you know, amount of time that's gone by that she's like, you know what, I'm going to make a, I'm going to take a risk here. And it's kind of like this whole, we're on a vacation. Remember she goes, we're on a vacation, you know? So it's like, hey, we'll always have, you know, Carlsbad or whatever, wherever you guys are, you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, well, it was like kind of like an extensive, like first date. Now I'm kind of thinking, was there even anything wrong with her car? That might have just been the way to initiate Ooh, a conversation oh, with oh, anybody, anybody who walked by. Hey, Jen, <laughs> hey, Jen I got to apologize. These guys are going on, on you deep. No, <laughs> that's deep. I, I, that is an interesting thought. I, I, I mean, I played it as to like, you know, she really did have the car battery go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't ruin it. I thought, I thought the car was wrong. This is serendipitous. <laughs> <laughs> she is a serial, a serial. You could, you could easily. I love love. You know, that she's like this, like, I'm going to do these experiments. But I think for her, you know, when, so right, you and I, I, I mean, I don't know where, what's going on in your guys' life for real, but like, let's just pretend like it's just normal life and you get a flat tire, a dead battery. Like, you're going to be pretty pissed off about that. Yeah, and I think for somebody like her who's gone through this stuff, it's just kind of like, eh, you know, just I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna sweat the small stuff here. Yeah, because she, and was, yeah, and I think she just. I mean, kind of like when he's kind of like, oh, woe is me, I might lose my job, and blah blah blah. Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, try, you know, try losing something you know, that really matters yeah. to you. you know and I, I mean? feel like <laughs> the reason it was him 
where she really started to like go after him and want to get to know him is like she saw something broken in him that yeah. she saw in herself in that herself. she wanted mm. to fix because she hasn't been able to fix herself. So, you know, okay. like a lot of people will do that. Like they're attracted to something <clears throat> that they weren't able to fix in their past because they want to now fix the person because they want to complete the cycle. Wow. And I, I feel like as a character that was like, okay, this it's this guy. Like that's all of a sudden why it was him, you know. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they also said that about, about Cindy. Uh, she was a bitch. <laughs> 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 she was really trying to uh, take him to a better place mentally. From, I mean, literally yeah. the moment. Yeah. That I mean, and it's just like it's. it's see, I feel like we're not highlighting the, the, uh, my man, the special agent Uber driver, bro, uh, slash uh, guardian angel of uh, Val. Yes. Uh, fucking, uh, Dijon. Yeah, the, the, he was he's Cupid himself, basically, right? <laughs> because apparently he this is one of his favorite stories, right? And, and like, yes. the one thing with him is like, you know, when he's like, you know, oh, bowling at uh 9 30 a.m., huh? Like, you know what I mean? like that's just like that's a new one. Yeah, like you know, because he didn't seen it all, right? Like, mm -hmm. like oh, this, this is cute, you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. And then he could tell, like, you know, he's already examining him, and you see he's looking through the rear view, and he's like, you know, she's really you know, she's the talker and he's a little, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and it's like funny analyzing everything. Like, yeah, because what would an Uber driver do though all day? Right. It's just like, yeah. you know, just the idea of that, right. You got strangers hopping in your car and you know, right. and you, you know, you get this little Drama, piece of their Drama. life, but he has this extended version of it. Right. Or it's like, right. you know, cause nine times out of 10, you hop on the car. You never see that motherfucker ever again. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like he does what we're doing with movies. It's like we analyze it to a point that like right. people might not even right. have answers. <laughs> well, you know what's what interesting it. about that is um, I, we wanted to find a reason like at first in the script, it was going to be like it was such a small town that it was like only one Uber driver and they kept getting mm. that was going to be a joke. But then it, we wanted it to. Oh, like every time. Oh, you the only Uber driver. That's okay. how small it is. One, yeah. you have one driver. Right. <laughs> but then we were kind of like, that seems. I don't know. That might take people out of the story. And then we, we wanted to seem like you know he's running his own business and like this is something you know he's promoting. And I, I recently. Think he's magical. That's what I took from it. Like he's the magical he like matchmaker. Like is, you hop is. in his car and you find your love. I feel like he's the magic. He's like the fairy godmother. Yes, this, exactly. Which I just love. He really does bring that magic. But Dejan, if you knew him as a person, he's a magical being. So I'm not surprised he brought that to the role. Yeah, with very um, little lines too, right? Just very little yeah. lines. Like he, yeah, but he leaves an impression. Magical. Yeah, I like how he's the Morgan Freeman of the movie, movie though. Sometimes yeah. that's Morgan, being the Morgan Freeman. Magical movie. old black dude, right? <laughs> So I mean, that's what Morgan Freeman was in all of his joints. Heck yeah. He was yeah, yeah. Isn't he, he was like God at some point. I mean, yeah, he sure was. He yeah, God. Was. And he's crazy enough to meet Jim yeah. Carrey to take his place for a say, listen, I'm going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone yeah. for a sec. <laughs> But yeah, I was like, that's why we, we we wanted him to have a driving business. And, you know, what's interesting is I, through my, one of my jobs, uh, they assigned me a driver um, because I had such early pickups and drop-offs um, at the airport. This is when I was doing um, medical stuff on um, like American Idol and stuff, and I had to travel with them. So it was hard to get an Ooh. Uber driver at like three in the morning. So yeah, my company yeah, set sure. me up with a regular driver. She does this for a living. And I liked her so much that now I don't even want to call Uber. I just want her to come because I've gotten to know her. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. sounds fancy, yeah. but I mean, it supports her driving business. And I'm just like, she's cool. I know I can trust her. And she's on yeah, time. Uber's going Uber's to hate it if they see this movie. Like, oh, they they're going to hand out. They're going to hand out business cards that promote their business. I don't know why every Uber driver wouldn't be doing I mean, I know Uber drivers that allegedly sell weed all day while they're just driving Uber around. I mean, they allegedly? allegedly? Yeah, that is alleged. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I'm not a snitch. Oh. <laughs> I actually, at one point in time, cream. tried to develop a series about a uh, counselor who ends up becoming an Uber driver, but she combines her counseling with the driving. So she's like counseling people in the back. So you get, you get a free counseling session while you're getting driven to your next destination. That's I smart. That. That's no, we smart. made it. We made a short. It's called driving this crazy. Um, <laughs> no. 
Nice. At some point, at some point, maybe we will um, finish that. But I don't know. It just you just reminded me of that with the whole Uber and you know. Okay, definitely. listen, I gotta be one of those fools that hop in the Uber. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you want the cameo? Yeah, I'm gonna get the cameo right, and I'll be playing <laughs> me though. You know what I mean? And I'm hella late. I'm running the late as fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> as usual, right? <laughs> and, then and then the whole thing is about you know. There's, you have the same 24 hours in a day. You know that, right? Like, you know, because I'm like, step on it. Come on, I'm late. <laughs> well, it's your fault. Yeah, my let's fault. Let's like, what are you, my mom? And then as I realized <laughs> that, you know what? You're right, mom. I'm always late. It's my fault. <laughs> Boom. No, it's, the, it's the Uber driver's fault. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. All right, Nelson, why, why don't you bring us back for the for the end of uh, Act One? So we're in the we made it to the to the bowling alley scene. Oh right. Yes, yeah, so the bowling alley, and then they go for a drink and drinking mm -hmm. beers, a couple of beers each, and they're talking about. Um, well, she makes a step up and says, "Brandon, who's that? Yeah. Oh no, I don't want to pry. I don't want to pry. It's okay. No, no, no. Brandon's my the drum roll. I'm like, okay, who is this Brandon guy? Yeah. No, After no, all this like, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. He's like, no, I don't want to know of anything. Okay, we're not going to find out. And then uh, we finally find out that Brandon is her husband. Or was her husband. Was her husband. Nice. Right after all the hot dog talk, too. It just goes from <laughs> all the hot dog talk right into the uh, blue ball. He didn't see a ring on either finger. No ring. <laughs> nope. So what's up with that? You know oh. what's funny, too? is is no uh, longer with us. My girl, my girl goes right when I when she goes, Oh, I'm uh, you know, this is my husband. She goes, He's dead. She's like, you know. She's like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, yeah, she she called it like a motherfucker. I'm like, oh shit. And yeah. then she, yeah, you know what I mean? She just called that shit. I'm like, she's like, why wouldn't she be out there? You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I wasn't even thinking so that much the, the film. What did you think, Nelson? I thought it was just simple. I have a husband, but hey, we can still get it on. <laughs> That's what I thought it was happening. Yeah. I was Never wrong. Know. Yeah, I was it's now, it's really now, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking the dead husband too, because the whole time I kept thinking that this is like fake bubbliness. Like that's right. just what I was thinking the entire time is like she's putting on some kind of act, and I don't know why. I thought here, here's here my exact I don't know thought. why you're all serious. I ain't gonna lie to this. Here's my exact <laughs> thoughts is I thought he was gonna I thought he was gonna hit me. I was like, oh he got this now. Like when she said he was dead, I was like, oh no, it's the vulnerable thing. Like, you know what I mean? And then I even started thinking about like the serendipitous angle, right? I'm like, oh shit, like, you know what I mean? Like, this might be the first dude that she's ever like, you know what I mean? It's because you know, it's not like you know, when you go on a date or you get set up on a date mm -hmm. or whatever, you know what I mean? There's gonna be some type of attraction prior, right? Like you might be your homegirl's like, Hey, dude, I got this dude, he's perfect. You, you this is your type, but you might, you know, someone set you up on some kind of premise, right? right, Maybe right. She even case, it's all her. circumstantial, you know what I mean? Like it's not, you know what I mean? They're the way they're meeting is the way she's opening up to like she's telling them the goddamn for all we know that she's go bowling with Brandon, you know what I mean. <laughs> Well, right, you know, and it made her slip up like, oh shit! It reminds me of this. Ah, never mind. And then he's like, wait, tell me more. And, you know, and, and he even has the respect. Actually, he didn't say tell me more. He has the respect to be like, don't even. Not, it's all right. I'm all over saying because he's almost not trying to be emotionally available at all. No, he's so, you know he's I mean? so consumed with his job. It's almost like she's this distraction that just wandered in, and he's kind of going along for the ride. You're right. If and if the that, would have been... that wakes him up and he's like, wait, what? Wait, what's happening with you now? You know, Damn, if he never, if he never, yeah. see, this is the thing too now in hindsight, if he had never left that bin now, he wouldn't have yeah. never met her. Yeah. Well, and not even that. Well, maybe not met her in this, in this circumstance. Well, right. they, they would have met, but they both would have had to go to work. That's true. Yeah. And it would have been probably just professional. And it's like, okay, you guys work for like different, different regions. They don't live in the same area, so it would have been like, okay, cool, nice meeting you, and then never seen them again. You know, they wouldn't yeah. have had this time to actually get to know each other, which yeah. was the whole magic well, of it shutting down and the cockroaches and all that fun stuff. So it is true. <laughs> well, idle time. That's what they did with the idle time. Idle, you know, time in their hands. Right. I thought that was cool. Yeah. The wasting time. Uh, how how was it worded? 
Uh, what, what um, wasted time you putting? No, it, time, um, time well wasted. Time well wasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. This is a perfect example of time well wasted. Yeah, he liked yeah, that a lot. You, 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 you ended up eating one. like uh, two meals, I think, in the same place on the same day, right? Right. You order yeah, food. Got- Let's order food again, or go to. <laughs> yeah, they all they do is like eat and drink all day, which I mean, you know, if you're a busy working person. When are you going to go off and just like randomly have like beers and multiple meals all day with some? I mean, this is like a treat. I've done it. Yeah, yeah it's like an extension. <laughs> and go bowling at 9 30 in the morning. Like yeah. And look, to be honest, too, as a man, <laughs> as a man myself, right? Yes. There, you know, when a woman is beautiful, there's there, there, as plutonic as it is in my mind, I'm still thinking, like, bro, is she on me? Cause I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you know, and then like, <laughs> I'm just saying though, but the he's, so, Mac. he's so distracted though. You know, I'm not, I'm not Brett. Right. But yeah, got, I'm just putting myself in Brett's shoes, but he's so distracted that he not seen, like he almost doesn't see what's in front of him. Exactly. But, but he does. The funny yeah. thing is once, once she gets upset and she's kind of like, I think he starts to sense like, Oh, this girl might leave now. Uh, we've oh, he cares. We've touched- We've touched on a sensitive subject. Suddenly, he's like, "Oh, uh, let's go back to how things were before. This is the most fun I've had all day." Like he suddenly oh, yeah, he, he, like yeah, wakes yeah, him yeah, up yeah. to like, "Oh wait, shoot!" Like I don't want to. I was pulling this. my non hairs out, saying, "This guy's got it in the bag. Go, <laughs> like, go come on, on Brett! <laughs> like yeah. tag me in, man." She talked about hot dogs for like five minutes. Pick up on the on the hints. Just come on. Yeah. Get the and then, and then, the, and then the fairy godmother shows up. And he saves the day where he's like, where am I taking you to? Like, he's yeah. just excited. Yeah. To- he, he, and it's almost like he's living vicariously, right? Like, yeah. he's like listen, man, listen, I got you, bro. You know what I mean? You got he's this. Like, I know it's going to, I know it's going to work here. Yeah. He's well, like, I, I give you guys credit, like, Jen, you on this that? whole crescendo of intensity. Cause I was like, I was, I was ready before. Like, okay, let's go guys. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. But, but it was like, it was really slow crescendo of like teasers, you know? Right. Which I think is what you want in a romance. I mean, how many times do you watch a show and there's like the two people you really want to get together, but they're just not getting together. And like people Mm. are so into the show because they cannot wait. And then once a lot. I couldn't stand it when Dylan was with Kelly. I ain't going to (laughs) lie. Not on two and oh. Then once yeah, they get together, yeah. Once you're they get together, right? like it loses, um, like sometimes you lose the audience because then you're like, oh, well, now they're together. The excitement of the chase is over. Not always, but sometimes. So it's like you want to keep building that as long as you can to get people hooked and excited, I think. I think I oh, yeah. that well. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, then I they like- go ice skating thanks to the fairy godmother. I think oh, yeah, they, they made it uh, dealer's choice. They didn't even know what they wanted to do because they're both no. in their element. But also, who better to ask than the guy that knows his way all around town, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. In Southern oh, California, he's the one to recommend and to ice skating. Like, I mean, you know, I, this is <laughs> about, man, shout out to my man Spencer Guru, right? Because he's like my little bro. You know what I mean? And he, you know, he's in, he's a, uh, you know, his mid twenties. And uh and uh or early twenties, and he asked me, "So what should I do, Bogard? Where should I take the uh, take her on a day?" I said, "Man, you know, if she, you know, you want to go somewhere with just some dancing, you know what I mean? So you get some contact, you know what I mean? Where it's yeah, not I'll weird, you know what I mean? Get some ice, cr- you know, ice skating is one of those ones. It's like, oh, you can't ice skate. Oh, let me, you know what I mean? Like you just, you exactly. know, what <laughs> you know what, what a man wants to do. A man wants to go do any type of physical thing as you're as you're talking about. Oh, that you yeah. have better agility than the woman does." Mm-hmm. Ooh! Like when you're yeah, skating, I saw you skating. You're like, look like a test dummy. Who? <laughs> Me? You, you when you're skating because you you, you couldn't skate, right? Not this, I, no, like I know, character, I, know how, I know how to skate. I was trying to skate badly so that oh, I okay, could, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that I could make Frank look better because he doesn't. That's really what know I'm how saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, so but the character. Know, could, I couldn't skate too well. It would have thrown off the whole. You know, and he's like, you met at a hockey game, which was funny because it's like Brett has nothing to entail that she is a good skater. <laughs> like, right. Well, all well, she's, she's been doing, skate. all she's been doing is you know paying for everything, <laughs> being the one to like help get his mind, you know, just like out of the trash can because he's like such a sour puss and like mm-hmm. so yeah, she's got to keep doing <laughs> things, keep stroking his ego is what I felt by the bad skating. I forgot you got that Canadian blood in you too, so you know how to skate. 
Oh, <laughs> yes. My grandmother was Canadian, that. so. See, guys, I'm not alone here. We, hey, we love Canadians, okay? Canadians. <laughs> I love you guys like me, of course. It's a great start. Yes. You know what's cool about Canadians? They have the coolest stereotype. The stereotype for Canadians is that they're just nice people. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't have that about Americans. You know what I mean? That's true. We're not very That's nice. True. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I got a little bit of nice blood in me, you know. There you go. Us, so. I mean, yeah. shit, you were nice to Brett, right? <laughs> took him up to see. You took him to see the world, basically. Ain't nobody did it. He ain't never I been outside that, that produce section in years. <laughs> this was like a reverse Aladdin. Like, I can show you the world, but it was like reversed. She's going to like show everything. For real, though. <laughs> hey, Noble, say hello to Jen. Noble. Hello. <laughs> Young Noble. Who's this? This is Noble. It keeps popping Hi, in. Noble. Hi. He's coming in to try to steal my phone. I asked. <laughs> Alex's boy. It's so cute. Aw. Got the little afro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's doing the test. I like that. It's just banging. <laughs> why don't we uh so why don't we why don't we pause for act two real quick? And okay. uh yeah, this is where we're gonna do just a break yeah. for the in the yeah, break for the and for everybody watching, uh don't leave because you guys already know this is for the cut-ups. You know what I'm saying? And tune in next time for act two of something good coming. Is he going to hit the jackpot? Is he <laughs> so playing the I'm so dumb, it's cute role? Is she everything she says she is? Or is there hidden baggage? Tune in next time. Or is act she a killer? Two. <laughs> or is she a killer? And, yeah. Or is she a killer? <laughs> <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Picture shit. This ain't a dream, we really lit this shit. Don't intervene, yo, we with this shit. That's where the most high, we the most lit.